Hello everyone, hope we are all doing well. We are going to discuss about good hygienic practices. As we already know, for food to be safe and suitable for human consumption at all stages of the food supply chain, that is say, from the time of primary production in the farm to the time of consumption, we have to always apply the general principles of food hygiene to both good agricultural practices and good manufacturing practices. And these principles can be applied uh, to good agricultural practices and good manufacturing practices through the implementation of good hygienic practices. Therefore, we can define good hygienic practices as all the practices regarding the conditions and measures necessary to ensure the safety and suitability of food at all stages of the food chain. And so, good hygienic practices mainly aims to implement the essential principles of food hygiene applicable throughout the food chain in order to ensure that food is safe and suitable for human consumption. Uh, the categories in good hygienic practices implementation, or that to say, the areas which are being covered under good hygienic practices includes, uh, we have facility design and maintenance, equipment design and maintenance, documentation, process validation, corrective and preventive actions, traceability, management of incidents and product recall, job training and competence, hygiene and sanitation, waste removal, pest control, product contamination control, prevention of cross contamination, dispatch and transport, packaging and labeling, food safety and quality. Uh, so we are going to discuss about uh, these categories in the good hygienic practices implementation. And we are going to start by looking at uh, the building and equipment. So uh, when you look at the location of the building, uh, the buildings will be located uh, in a premise or in an area which uh, can allow for prevention of contamination. And this can be uh, ensured by always ensuring that uh, we locate the premises away from areas uh, that are polluted so that the food uh, will not be contaminated by pollutants. And also, we have to always ensure that uh, we locate the building uh, far away from areas that contain industrial activities so that the waste which are released by these industries will not enter and hence contaminate the food. Then we have to also make sure that uh, the, we locate the building uh, away from areas which are prone to flooding and pest infestation. And also we have to make sure we, all, uh, we locate it away from areas which makes it difficult to remove the waste efficiently. Then uh, the, the equipments uh, should be situated or installed to allow for adequate maintenance and cleaning, both outside and inside. And then also, these equipments will be installed or situated uh, in a, a place which allow for correct functioning of the equipment. Then uh, looking at the internal structures and fittings of the building, uh, the, the walls and floors should be the one which do not contain cracks, filling paints, toxic materials, because uh, these uh, are hazards. Once they get into contact with the food, they contaminate the food and hence make it uh, unsafe or unsuitable for human consumption. And therefore, uh, cracks on the walls can harbor germs and that, that can contaminate food and they do not allow walls or, or floors to be cleaned appropriately, appropriately. Then the surfaces of the wall, partition and floors will have smooth and impervious surface. And then uh, fungal growth, especially the moss on the walls can release toxic spores and contaminate food. Therefore, we have to prevent uh, 
the growth of these fungal in the, the building. Then floors should allow adequate drainage and cleaning. Then uh, the work surfaces are data on which the food will be put on as we are trying to process or handle the food. Uh, should be the one uh, which uh, avoid the build up of microorganisms or that or on the food. Then the working, uh, therefore the working surface will be the one which is easy to clean, easy to maintain, easy to disinfect and should be made of not or non-reactive material to avoid uh, cross-contamination. And we, this is very important because we know if uh, the work surface allows for the build of a build up of microorganisms, these uh, microorganisms will always uh, get a mix up with the food that we are trying to handle. And this one here uh, makes the food unsafe for human consumption because once we eat them, uh, they can cause uh, the foodborne illnesses or food poisoning, which in turn may result into adverse health effects. Then also the work surface should be smooth and inert to facilitate clean, cleaning and help avoid build up of food. It should be inert meaning that it should be non-reactive to, uh, to avoid uh, contamination which may result uh, from the reaction which may take place between the food and then the material on the work surface. Then uh, looking at the design and layout of the premises or the building, uh, we should always make sure that we pay attention to the good hygienic design and con construction, then appropriate location and also we should pay attention to the provision of adequate facilities. And all this will be ensured from the initial stages uh, of the setup of the building. And uh, of course this will enable hazards to be effectively controlled before they occur in the food that is being handled or produced. Then uh, it may also, besides this, uh, besides enabling hazards to be controlled effectively, uh, if we uh, think of, we pay attention to the good hygienic uh, and design and construction, then its location and the provision of adequate facility after us uh, designing or coming up with the design and layout of the premises, it will then be difficult for us to change the la layout and the basic design later when operations are functional. So before uh, the operation starts, we have to always ensure we pay attention to those three areas which we have highlighted. Then the internal design and layout of the food establishments should be the one which permit good hygiene practices like protection, uh, protection against cross-contamination between and during operation. So uh, looking at the layout uh, of the premises, the layout should be the one which permits good hygiene practices and then it should be the one which protects against cross-contamination between and during operation by food staffs. And, uh, it can, the cross contamination can be prevented uh, when the flow of product are linear and unidirectional. That is that to say, uh, when the, the flow of product is from raw materials to semi processed to processed food. Uh, because if it is in the opposite way, that say from the processed food to the raw materials, there will always be cross contamination. Then uh, the production line must not cross through another stage or exist close to the raw materials, raw material input stage. Uh, this will also help to, uh, in the prevention of the transfer of pathogens which might be present in the raw materials to the processed food. Then food products must not be allowed to move back to the lower stage of processing for subsequent operations then the flow of waste must be in the direction opposite to the flow of the processed uh, food. And this is also very important because uh, if uh, the, 
the flow of the waste and the flow of the processed food are in the same direction, there is always a cross-contamination which takes place, whereby you find the waste may end up contaminating the processed food. That's why their, their flow has to be in the opposite direction. Then, uh, looking at the equipment, uh, the equipment that we are using, we are going to, we, we use for handling uh, the food should be the one which is clean and non-toxic. And uh, this one can be ensured by allowing the equipment should be the should be the one which allows for adequate cleaning, disinfection, disinfection, and maintenance. And this will help to avoid contamination of the food. And uh, these equipments will also have non-toxic effect in the intended use. And uh, besides that, also uh, the equipments will be movable and detachable. By uh, by saying it should be detachable means that uh, it should be the one which allow itself to be disassembled. And the disassembling is mainly done for proper maintenance, cleanance, cleaning, and then disinfection, and then monitoring. So uh, this means that uh, always we have to ensure that the equipment uh, should not have toxic effects. The props of measuring monitoring devices are the ones which are detachable. Then uh, the equipment can be the should be the one which can be disassembled for cleaning and repair. Convey belt design are not suitable for cleaning since they cannot be disassembled. We have to take note of that in the, uh, in the manufacturing uh, industries. Then uh, uh, also we have to monitor for the food characteristic. So uh, the equipment that we are going to use to be the one which can allow for the mo for monitoring the food characteristic, and that's why uh, it has to be designed to achieve the required food temperature as rapidly as necessary. And this one here can depend on the type of food that will be contained uh, in the equipment or the type of food that can be used for storing the. The food. Then uh, the equipment will also allow temperatures to be monitored and controlled and where necessary to have effective means of controlling and monitoring humidity. Uh, this uh, monitoring humidity is also very important because uh, it is a, the how long the food can stay depends on the water activity. Uh, if there's a, the water activity is high, that means uh, it provides the moisture. For microorganism to grow and multiply, and hence uh, it can easily result in the food spoilage, making the food unsafe for human consumption. Then also temperature does it the same way because uh, there are temperatures uh, which are appropriate or which are optimum for the growth and multiplication of microorganisms. So if the the temperature in the food is the one which supports the growth and multiplication of a particular microorganism. That microorganism will multiply and grow very fast. That's why it is very always very important to make sure that uh, the equipment that we are using for handling the, the food should be the one which can allow for its temperature to be monitored and controlled so that we can adjust and depending on the type of the food that we are dealing with. Then also, uh, there has to be an effective means of controlling and monitoring airflow and any other characteristic likely to have detrimental effect on safety and suitability of food. So that is it. And then uh, looking at the facilities for food operation, uh, we should have facilities uh, for heating, cooling, and cooking. Then also there has to be facilities for refrigeration, freezing of the foods. And then also there has to be facilities for storing refrigerated and frozen foods. There has to be uh, facilities 
for monitoring food temperatures and when necessary controlling ambient temperatures to ensure that the food remains safe and suitable for human consumption. So still under the design and the layout of the premises, uh, there has to be uh, the way of how we can uh, keep the waste data uh, will be released uh, in the process of handling or dealing with the food. So uh, waste will be specifically identifiable so that uh, it to prevent accidental contamination. Then uh, it has to be suitably constructed to avoid contamination and then the materials that we are going to use for keeping this waste will be the one which is made up of impervious materials. Even if uh, it is uh, going through the channel, the channel should be the one which is impervious or the one which does not leak to avoid uh, contamination. Then uh, dangerous substances uh, should always be identifiable. They should be identified and then if we are disposing them, we can dispose them in a, a equipment which are lockable. And this will help to prevent malicious or accidental contamination of the food. Because if we can identify the waste and even the containers for keeping this waste, then we malicious or accidental contamination of food uh, by these dangerous substances will, will be uh, prevented. Then, uh, looking at the, some of the facilities, uh, always there has to be water. This is very, very important. And uh, the water which uh, has to be available should be the one which is, should be adequate and of portable quality. When we say portable quality, we mean it has to be of drinking quality. So that's why you would always advise that if uh, we want to use water for cleaning. The one which we are using for cleaning should be the one which is portable or of drinking uh, quality. And if that is not possible, we have to first of all treat the water by either boiling or chlorination or filtration so that it becomes of a drinking quality. So well, the water should also be adequate and of portable, portable quality with appropriate facility for its storage and distribution. Then we have to always make sure we control temperature whenever necessary to ensure the safety and suitability of food. Then uh, uh, we have to always ensure that the non-portable water, uh, when we are using the one especially we use in fire control, steam production, refrigeration, or any other similar purpose, uh, should have a separate system. This will help uh, to avoid uh, the non-potable water, to prevent the non-potable water from contaminating the potable water. And that's why we say the non-potable water system should have to be uh, shall have to be identified and should not connect with or allow reflux into the potable water system. Then there has to be adequate drainage and waste disposal, which will be provided and designed, avoiding risk of contamination to food and portable water supply. Because uh, if uh, there's no drainage, adequate drainage and waste disposal, uh, disposal uh, system, then there is a likelihood of contaminating the food and then the portable water supply. Then uh, there has to be cleaning facilities and um, we should not use rusted water containers because it is uh, having rust and we know those uh, rust are formed as a result of chemical reaction and once they get into the food and uh, the food will get contaminated or unsafe for consumption. So rusted water containers and metal drums are not suited. Uh, to washing materials that come into contact with the food because they can easily contaminate the food. Then uh, adequate facilities suitably designed to be provided for cleaning food, 
utensils and then equipment then uh, there has to be uh, also personal changing and washing facilities and uh, this will help to promote uh, personal hygiene in the facilities that's why uh, the personal hygiene facilities should be available to ensure that uh, there, there is personal hygiene and uh, this personal hygiene should have to be maintained and uh, if it is maintained it helps to avoid contamination of food during the process of food handling which can be from the farm or from the manufacturing uh, facility or industry where appropriate facilities will include adequate means of hygienically washing and drying hands uh, there has to be wash basins supply of hot and cold water lavatories of appropriate hygienic design and adequate changing facility for personnel because all this uh, promotes uh, personal hygiene and if uh, personal hygiene is maintained in the facility then uh, the risk of food contamination uh, will be reduced still uh, at the facility at the design and layout of the premises uh, of course, uh, there has to be lighting and ventilation. We have to always ensure that uh, there is adequate means of natural or mechanical ventilation provided, in particular, to minimize airborne contamination of food, uh, which may result from, for instance, uh, condensation droplets. Then also, uh, good uh, ventilation helps to control ambient temperature within the uh, operation area and also it helps to control odors which might affect suitability of food because it allows circulation of fresh air within the operation area and then it also helps to control humidity and where necessary to ensure the safety and suitability of Food because uh, if humidity is not controlled, that means uh, uh, the place will be having a lot of moisture, which encourages the growth of microorganisms. Then uh, the lighting should be the one which uh, should not be the one that result in a color, which can mislead okay lighting should not be such that the resulting color is the one which is misleading because uh, take for instance uh, if you have received a raw material let's say a maize and if you want to sort the maize the better that you get the the bad one you sort the bad ones out to leave the good one if the color is the one which misleads you may end up uh, selecting a bad one to be a good one or oh, let's say for instance if there's a, a small stone in the in the maze instead of selecting that small stone uh, as a hazard you may end up picking a, a good maze and uh, this one can be as a result of having misleading colors so that's why we say lighting should not be such that the resulting color is misleading the intensity of the light should be adequate to the nature of the operation so that uh, all the areas of operation uh, are not dark for easy visibility then uh, Ventilation systems should be designed and constructed so that air does not flow from contaminated areas to clean areas to avoid cross contamination. And uh, the ventilation system should be adequately maintained and clean. So, uh, looking at the storage, uh, provide adequate and separate facilities for storage of food ingredients 
non-food chemicals, uh, e.g. cleaning materials, lubricants, fuels, and so on. And this will uh, help to prevent cross contamination or contamination of food with these other uh, chemicals or substances. Then, uh, food storage facilities should be designed and constructed to permit adequate maintenance and cleaning, avoid pest access and harborage, uh, enable food to be protected from contamination and deterioration during storage. And then also, uh, one the other area which is covered under good hygienic practices is the control of operation. And uh, when we are controlling uh, operations, there are parameters which we take into consideration. And these parameters in, that we control during operation includes uh, correct temperature, pressure, humidity, water activity, pH level, because it is a, these are uh, parameters which influences the growth and multiplication of microorganisms which are hazardous in food. Then also we control contamination which can be as a result of extraneous materials, aflatoxins, pesticide residues and so on. So uh, the control of operation it is always important to take note of the incoming materials, especially the raw materials. So there has to always be uh, quality control when it comes to uh, incoming raw materials that we are going to be using for processing food. So we should always make sure that we use only sound, suitable raw materials or ingredients for processing food. And this is very important because uh, uh, if we use a raw material which contains a hazard, definitely the food product that we are going to produce will be the one which is unsafe and suitable for human consumption. Then uh, we have to ensure that we do not accept raw materials or ingredients if it is not if it is known to contain hazards or the one which are decomposed. And uh, we can ensure that by inspecting and sorting out the raw materials uh, properly before we accept them or before we use them for processing food. And then specification for raw materials will be identified and applied. Raw materials or ingredients will be inspected and sorted before processing. Stocks of raw materials and ingredients to be subject to stock rotation. Uh, by this we say fast in, fast out. And this means that uh, the raw materials that we have stock stocked fast have to be used fast because if uh, we use the one which we have recently stocked, the old ones may end up decomposing or getting spoiled from the stock. That's why the one which we stock fast, we have to make sure that we use them fast in the food processing. Uh, so whenever we talk about uh, control of operation and especially uh, in, the, in the, the incoming raw materials, we always uh, uh, use uh, a system which is known as the hazard analysis and critical control point as we have discussed. This system is very important because its main role is to identify food hazards and control them before them occurring in food production. So always we have to, whenever starting from the reception of raw materials, we have to ensure that we always use systems of hazard analysis and critical control points so that if it, they, 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 they are having hazards, these hazards will be identified and controlled before uh, reaching, the, before completion. Of the process of processing the food. Then uh, points of hazard analysis and critical control point we can uh, 
I start from receipt of raw materials to processing and delivery of product. This is where we are, can apply the hazard analysis and critical control point. And uh, here, uh, we should identify the steps in the operation which are critical, which are critical to the safety of food areas in the process, in the operation, or steps in the operation where we feel uh, contamination or hazards can easily occur. We have to identify them. And after identifying them, we have to implement effective control procedures at those steps. And uh, as we are implementing this, we have to monitor control procedures to ensure their continuing effectiveness. And then we have to review control procedures periodically and whenever the operation changes. Uh, we have discussed about this system uh, in our previous in our previous lectures and therefore you can refer to it if you want to know more about this system so uh, also still under the control of operation um, there are uh, food process parameters that we have to always take into consideration if we want to uh, do hygiene control in food processing operations and uh, these parameters will have to be effectively controlled to ensure that there is good hygiene during food processing, uh, which in turn will result in the safe and suitable food food products. And these parameters include: we have temperature, and uh, we can, uh, when talk of temperature, we can uh, talk of heating and uh, chilling, depending on the the condition. Then also uh, there, uh, the the other parameter is moisture. And we can control this by drying. Then chemical preservation, vacuum or modified atmospheric packaging, <coughs> microbiological and physical contamination based on sound scientific principles. Then uh, food thermometers can be used to confirm that the interior of the food has raised to adequate cooking temperature so that all the microorganisms that might be all the pathogens that might be present in the food will all be destroyed or killed. Then also we have to, during the operation, we have to always control cross-contamination. And the cross-contamination can be pre prevented by separating cooked food from raw ingredients or from unprepared food or from raw materials. And this will help to avoid the transfer of pathogen from the raw foods to the cooked food. Then we have to also prevent cross-contamination by not allowing unauthorized staffs or visitors from getting into the food operation area. Then we have to prevent entry of dust, fumes, smoke, and insects into the processing area by those or other appropriate physical barriers. Very important to avoid the transfer of pathogens into the food. Then uh, also uh, the other important area which is covered by good hygienic practices is uh, personal hygiene. Personal hygiene. And under this we are going to look at the hygiene and protective clothing. So food handlers should maintain a high degree of personal cleanliness. And then also uh, they should or they must wear suitable protective clothing, head covering and foot wears. Then uh, sick people, for instance, those who have cut wound, cuts and wounds, should not be permitted to continue working. In the food operation area or if possible we should always ensure that uh, uh, their cuts and wounds are covered by suitable waterproof dressing uh, to avoid uh, contamination of the food then uh, looking at the staff health we have to always monitor the health of the staff so that if in case uh, 
the staff is sick, we report uh, to the people who are concerned. And uh, if the, if worse, the staff has to be exempted from handling food. So the common conditions that uh, can make uh, or that uh, can qualify a staff not to be allowed to enter into the food processing area includes uh, jaundice, diarrhea, vomiting, fever, sore throat with fever, uh, infected skin lesions, e.g. boils, cuts, and so on, discharge from the ear, nose, and the eye. Uh, if an individual or a staff is having any of these conditions, he or she should not be allowed to handle food. And we can know this by doing a periodic medical examination or medical checkup. We have to ensure that we check the staffs regularly so that if any, any of them are having this condition, they should not be allowed to handle food. But instead, they have to be treated, treated first before they handle food. Then still under personal hygiene, uh, hand washing, very, very important. Personnel will always wash their hands, for example, at the start of food handling activities, immediately after using the toilet, after handling raw food or any other contaminated material, and after smoking to avoid contaminating the food that they are handling. Then uh, uh, sometimes we use gloves, and uh, if we are using gloves, we should make sure that the gloves are fresh and clean always. And the contaminated gloves, uh, since they can be hazardous to food, since they can be hazardous to food, we always make sure that we change them often. For instance, uh, as we are washing our hands, we have to change. Once you have washed your hands, you have to change it. Uh, the gloves. And then, uh, still under personal hygiene, we can talk of personal conduct. People engaged in food handling activities should refrain from conducting themselves in a manner which could result in food contamination. For instance, smoking, spitting, chewing gum or tobacco, eating, sneezing, or coughing uh, over uh, coughing over unprotected food and in the premises where food is being processed. This is to avoid uh, contamination or transfer of pathogens from uh, this personnel to the food. Then uh, personal effects such as uh, jewelry, watches, pins, or other items do not be worn or brought into food handling area if they pose a threat to safety and suitability of food because these are uh, some of these personal effects may accidentally enter into the food and once it is consumed it can cause physical injuries to the, to the consumers then uh, also these personal effects may harbor germs or may fall accidentally into the food then still the other area covered under good hygienic practices uh, is uh, cleaning and maintenance. So uh, there has to always be a regular repair of the equipment or the machines which are used and uh, they have to always be maintained in a good condition. That's all and maintain equipment and facilities promote food hazards, pests and other agents likely to contaminate food that's why we have to always maintain them clean and also repair them often rusted equipment with old sediments pose, poses a food contamination hazard grease and oil from machineries can creep into the food that's why they have to be repaired so that they are always in good condition 
then uh, we have to carry out repairs early. Then also still under cleaning and maintenance, now uh, the cleaning methods, cleaning should, rem should be the one which remove food residues and that which may be a source of contamination. And always uh, after cleaning, uh, where necessary, we have to disinfect. And uh, during the cleaning process, the detergent that we are going to use will also uh, depend on the food residue uh, which has been left on the work surfaces or uh, on the equipment or the machine. And uh, if we use appropriate detergent, cleaning becomes easier and uh, this will help to prevent uh, contamination. Uh, for instance, uh, for protein residue, we always use uh, chlorinated alkaline detergent because with this detergent, it will be easier to clean protein residues. Then for fast and oil res residues, we use alkaline detergents. Then for carbohydrate residues, we use alkaline detergent also. For minerals uh, and salts, for salts, residues we use acidic detergent so that the minerals or the salt will react with the uh, with the detergent and hence leaving the material or the work surfaces clean then uh, cleaning chemicals to be handled and used carefully to avoid them getting into contact with food and hence contaminating it then uh, they have to be used in accordance with manufacturer's instructions, stored appropriately from food, I mean stored separately from food, uh, clearly identified to avoid the risk of contamination or accidental or malicious contamination of food. Then uh, there has to be cleaning programs. Uh, you have to ensure that all parts of the establishments are appropriately cleaned use food compatible cleaning products include the cleaning of the cleaning equipment because this is what mostly people tend to forget the equipment that they are using for cleaning they don't maintain it clean and that one can easily result into contamination continually and effectively monitored for their suitability and effectiveness the cleaning equipment will be effectively monitored for their suitability and effectiveness. Then there has to be documentation. It's uh, specify the areas, items of the equipment, utensil to be clear responsibility for particular tasks, method and frequency of cleaning and monitoring arrangement. And this documentation is uh, very important because it helps in traceability in case of a food hazard occurring then uh, also still under maintenance and cleaning uh, we have to always make sure we control pests and we can do that by avoiding create, uh, or creating uh, by avoiding a creation of an environment conducive to pests so that uh, like having cracks and so on all those ones there makes their, the environment conducive to pests so we have to avoid the, uh, those uh, cracks and some other things which makes the environment conducive for pests. Good sanitation and monitoring of incoming materials reduce likelihood of pest infestation. Then reduce the pest infestation reduces need for pesticide application which may uh, contaminate the food when they get into contact with the Keep building in good repair to prevent pest access and eliminate potential breeding sites uh, like the holes, cracks, spaces in the walls, corners, floors uh, can provide shelter to the pests, so we have to avoid them. Then we have to install cleanable wire mesh screens, uh, especially uh, on the open windows, doors, and a ventilator so that they, they can trap a pest in case they attempt to enter into the food operation areas. Then animals should be excluded from the grounds of factories and food processing plants to avoid contamination. Then uh, 
avoid scraps and bruises in the vicinity of the facility and at the entrance or exit of the facility so that uh, they don't uh, harbor pests. No plants will be grown inside the premises. Treatment with chemical, physical, or biological agents will be uh, agents will be carried out without posing a threat to the safety or suitability of food. Because sometimes, uh, when you want to control the pests, you may end up using chemicals or physical means or biological agents to control the pests. But now, whenever we are doing this, we should make sure that uh, we don't uh, pose a threat to the safety and suitability of the food then we have to use only permitted pesticides uh, by following the instruction of the manufacturer and also we take you need to take into consideration the pesticide which is recommended to be used in that particular area or country then uh, use pesticides suited to the particular pest so that it will be in position of killing the pest that you intend to control Storage, stuck, stuck, stored produce in pest proof packs and containers above the ground. Then products will be at least 50 centimeters away from the walls to allow cleaning and pest control. Store refuse in covered or pest proof containers. Then do not allow waste food particles or water to accumulate uh, to avoid pests. Establishments and surrounding areas will be regularly examined for infestation and where appropriately we have to clean them so that they, they, they don't harbor this pests. Then um, also the other area covered by good hygienic practices is uh, product information. And of course we know uh, sufficient product information or adequate knowledge of the general food hygiene uh, prevents products from being mishandled at a later stages in the food chain because uh, those who are involved in the later stages of the food chain will use that information for processing or handling that particular food product and once that happens there will be no mishandling and if there's no mishandling uh, it will help to prevent illness among the consumers and also uh, it prevents the products from becoming unsuitable for consumption. Then uh, each and therefore we have to ensure that each container of food will be permanently marked to identify the producer and the lot and this will help in the traceability. Then there has to also be lot identification. Uh, in a, which is essential in product recall and also help effective stock rotation so that you know which lots will you use first, especially the one which you have stored first. If you know the lot, then you have to use them first because you say first in, first out. Then all food products will bear adequate information to ensure the next person in the food chain to handle, display, store, prepare and use the product safely and correctly. But if there's no adequate information or, or adequate knowledge, then uh, it will be hard for the individual to handle the food safely and correctly. Products will bear sufficient information for consumers to make informed choices on ingredients and contents, including allergens and detergent. This is also very important because some consumers are allergic to other ingredients so if uh, the name of the ingredient has been included uh, in the labeling the it will help the consumer to make informed choices whether to consume the product or not and this will uh, help to prevent uh, uh, the consumer from those allergens or additives that are not uh, suitable for him or her best before and use by date will be indicated to guide the uh, the consumers so that they will know when to use or for how long to use the product. Prevent contamination and growth or survival of foodborne pathogen through instruction on storing, 
preparation and using the food product correctly correctively this is very important because it is a, the way the food is stored prepared or used that makes it uh, or that uh, facilitates the growth and multiplication of foodborne pathogen, especially the microorganisms. Then also the other area covered by good hygienic practices is uh, training. So those engaged in food operations will be trained or instructed in food hygiene to a level appropriate to the operation they are to perform. Because if they are not trained, they will not know. They will not know their roles and responsibilities uh, as far as uh, protection of the food from contamination or deterioration is concerned. So that's why, uh, especially the new uh, workers, will have to always be oriented or trained or instructed uh, on how they can protect the food from contamination and deterioration. Then also food handlers should have necessary knowledge and skills to enable them to handle food hygienically. And those who handle uh, strong cleaning chemicals or other potentially hazardous chemicals should be instructed in safe handling techniques so that in the process of them using those chemicals for cleaning or those potential hazardous chemicals, they will ensure that uh, those chemicals do not get into contact with the, the food. Then uh, the factors to take into consideration in assessing the level of training required includes the following. One, we have to take into consideration the nature of the food, in particular its ability to sustain growth of pathogenic or spoilage microorganisms. Uh, that means we have to take into consideration things like the water activities, the pH, uh, the temperature, and so on, so that uh, it is maintained uh, within that range that uh, does not allow for the growth and multiplication of those dangerous microorganisms. The manner in which the food is handled and packed and the probability of Contamination should also be taken into consideration. The extent and the nature of processing or further preparation before final consumption uh, has to also be noted. The conditions under which the food will be stored and the expected length of time before consumption will all be taken into consideration so that people will be guided, people will be trained appropriately how to handle the food so that the food will be safe and suitable for consumption. So with this, we have come to the end of our lectures. Thanks, Katya.